and so to controlling the Neo, the autonomous selfie modes I've already covered, but there are times when you'll want finer control and that's where your smartphone comes in. I'll be using an Android powered Sony phone here, but most of my previous flying was done with my iPhone that's currently shooting this video, proving that both platforms work just fine. On iOS, the DJI Fly app is a quick install from the App Store on Android. It's worth noting that DJI and Google disagree on something, so you have to sideload DJI Fly from their website. Don't be tricked by similar names in the Play Store. Doing this and setting things up on Android isn't trivial, but if you're geeky enough to be watching this and into drones of any size, then you'll work your way through it all. I did. Essentially, the Neo becomes a 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi hotspot of its own, and your phone connects to it, enabling fast video monitoring and control inputs. It works surprisingly well as long as you're within the 50 meter range, and that includes height. So think 40 meters distant and 15 meters up. You'll rarely go above 15 meters in the real world as you get more wind up there, the higher you go, and the Neo doesn't like wind. The DJI Fly app has two main interface points of interest. With it showing the Neo's camera view up top, you can essentially do all the things the autonomous selfie modes can do, yet with live camera, optional voice recording via the phone's microphone and the prop noise cancellation that I covered previously. And within settings, customize each of these modes. For example, changing the follow distance to close, medium or far and selecting one of three heights to follow at there's a video demo of the mode, but it's fixed and doesn't reflect your chosen settings, so watch out for that. Tap back on controls and the pill at the bottom confirms the current mode and its setting. And then it's time to tap start and the Neo is off on its program selfie routine. Now hidden under custom is the most useful mode of all, at least to me, direction track where the Neo stays ahead of me Letting me walk and talk like this. And a variation again in terms of distances and heights is possible. It's all rather fun. Hi there. The second interface demo is the most interesting of all, though. If you tap the mode pill here, you can select manual control, at which point you'll see a full screen option pop up on the camera view. Here we go then. Tap this and your phone just became a fully fledged drone controller. Working our way around the control interface, there are two virtual joysticks for up, down, rotate, left and right, and for movement, forwards, backs, left and right, as is the convention in the drone world. In fact, there's at least one alternative assignment, but I'll stick to the default. Up at the top right, we have the Neo's battery status counting down from 100 and with a colour coded circular indicator, followed by approximate flight time remaining, if appropriate in the current mode, and an indication of the Wi Fi signal to the drone. Near 50 metres distance, you'll get a maximum distance reach warning on the display, though in fact, you could kind of try and nudge the Neo just out of this and it may go there. But then to regain control, you've got to walk closer, which is why flying out over water from a pond edge or lakeshore isn't a good idea. Beneath these indicators are the main shutter button for start, stop recording and for taking still photos, along with the camera toggle to switch between the two modes. There's currently no way to take stills within a video shoot. This may change. The actual flying of the Neo with the joysticks along with smoothly panning around shooting footage and trying not to commit the ultimate sins of annoying other people or crashing somewhere inaccessible is all part of the learning fun, of course. Just knock yourself out. Actually getting the DJI Neo back is a bone of contention, with me at least a bit of a rant here. The Neo has a compass. It has accelerometers. It has GPS built in. It has forward and downwards camera. There is no reason why the controller software here on the phone shouldn't have a return to home function. If you upgrade and use a real DJI controller, aerials and all, then the Neo does support return to home. But it's mystifying what's missing here. I suppose DJI suppose that flying within 50 metres, you'll always be able to see the drone and so bring it back yourself. But I think that's a missed opportunity to help the poor novice user. On almost every flight, I think, right, what's the easiest way to bring the Neo back? Rotate this way, back a bit, forward a lot, down a bit and so on. It would be so easy if they just got the Neo, which knows exactly where it is, to just fly back to the point it was launched from. So please, DJI, in the next update, put this in. I know the whole point of the Neo is that you're often moving around yourself and that return to home might not make sense for everyone, but please at least make it an option or a toggle for people like me.
A final note about phone control is that you have the opportunity to adjust the capture formats and settings. On its own, the Neo just shoots 4K 30 frames per second in landscape, but here in the DJI Fly app, you can choose 1080p up to 60 frames a second in either landscape or portrait, though that latter is a digital crop, so you're technically losing a little bit of quality. There's also a colour profile setting, but this doesn't do anything yet, and an option of encoding H.264 or 265 according to what software you're going to be working with your footage in. In my case, iMovie for Mac, which handles both, but you might be fussier. So yes, your phone is now your drone controller with a surprising amount of functionality. I'll report back on significant updates, of course. Ditto, I'll answer any questions you may have. Thanks for watching. Thank you.